Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is September 27th, 2019. The time is 3pm Pacific. Two hours before the TwitchCon opening ceremony. It's already open, but they wait till the end of the first day to have the opening ceremony. So if you're watching this tomorrow after the opening ceremony, I want you to know that I have not yet invented time travel, but I am working on it. So I apologize if we don't cover shit that happens after the show is over. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on improving that for you guys. I am. All right. So. What's my time travel budget? <laughs> it's in bits. So whatever, whatever it says up the top. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 210 bits. That's my budget for time travel right there. Uh, so, TwitchCon is happening. TwitchCon uh, partner, uh, partner party was last night. Why don't you guys go ahead and uh, grab yourself a drink. Just any drink will do. Maybe just, maybe just stick your finger in there real quick just to kind of make sure that uh, the appropriate temperature for you before you pick one up. But, uh... <laughs> So, so <laughs> Bill Kyle, oh God, this is roofies. All, just, just sprinkle some roofies all over it. Just have a party. Um, really, really, uh, irresponsible. <laughs> like, I don't know what the situation is here. If they thought because it was the partner lounge, uh, and it was a partner party that they could trust other partners to not roofy things. But as Bill Cosby has shown us, there really is no one. Uh, no, no one that it's uh that's a hundred percent reliable. Every time Tom Hanks shows up on the sidebar for trending, I always hope that he's dead because the alternative is probably something I don't want to find out about. Poor Tom Hanks and just ruin every movie he's ever been in. But don't worry, he's the he's the last good one. Okay, him and Keanu Reeves. Okay, him and Keanu Reeves. They're the last good ones. All right, but yes. Keanu Reeves, neither Keanu Reeves nor Tom Hanks were in attendance uh, at the uh, TwitchCon partner party last night. Uh, so, I still feel this is slightly irresponsible to leave drinks out like this. Uh, the overall party was pretty loud. I'm not here to like, like bitch about the party and shit like that, but I didn't go, so I'm gonna bitch because I wasn't there. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Every year... Every year, at every convention, like, social gatherings get louder and fucking louder. And it's just, it, it's just fucking ridiculous. It just needs to fucking stop. <laughs> like, I mean, and, and here's the thing, like, all the partners don't want anything to do with all this loud shit. Like, a lot of them are there to, to actually, to actually socialize, right? Uh, this is actually Ann Munition's uh, tweet. Uh, she says, pretty disappointed to be honest, but I thought uh, Twitch was starting to understand that some of us want to have an option of a quieter place the partner party instead of a huge loud party also this is a huge safety concern uh how is this the way that they're serving drinks um and i actually have a clip here that i actually went and did some did some digging and i did find uh this clip right here of um uh dylan francis playing and you can see it plays his hype <laughs> super hype nobody cares because uh, nobody wants them there. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what's like. I don't think any of these nerds realize. Yes, they do. They just don't want to actually hear all that shit. Uh, I did, and actually, this one I'm going to hide because it's a, it's a pure Twitter uh, uh, search here. But, uh, but yeah, the, a lot, a lot of uh, of the feedback was that basically, partner party was just a little bit loud, and really, Twitch should like stop, stop with the loud shit, right? Just, just let people like, especially at the partner level, at the Twitch party. Where like everybody could get get in, yeah, dude. Like go nuts with like like you know make it make it a fucking rave, whatever you want to make it. But uh, but for the for the partner stuff, like people go there to socialize. So Twitch, please, shh. <laughs> fucking fucking shh. Uh, in other news, because we don't have actual Twitch news because the Twitch opening ceremony has not happened yet. Uh, we did get a glimpse at a new logo. A new logo, and uh, we got a glimpse at a uh, Venture Beat. Why? Why just uh, their new color scheme? Which, uh, if you're using Twitch, then you've already seen the new, uh, the new. <laughs> yeah, put it, put it cute to it, Twitch. <laughs> All those pre-stream inside, inside jokes. Uh, so they got a new logo. 
I honestly, I, I haven't compared them side by side, but if you showed me this, I would say what changed. Um, it did change, right? Hold on. Now I got to pull up the old one. I just assumed that it was so subtle that maybe I just didn't catch it or something. Uh, Twitch logo. Let me see. It, uh, uh did it change? Oh, what? Before, after. Oh, they flipped the W. <laughs> they flipped the W. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, instead of making it purple on white, they made it, uh, black on purple. Um, tighter holes. Are there tighter holes? <laughs> yeah. So, I think we can agree... That they did change something. <laughs> Twenty-five million dollars to come up with. Uh, even Venture Pete throws a little jab in here, which is kind of funny. Uh, it says out here, it says uh, above. Twitch spent a year figuring out how to change its logo. <laughs> so it's, it's just took a year. Just took about a year to come up with this. Um, but yeah, they uh, so so yes, they did make some changes to the logo. Uh, they made some changes to the overall theme of the site itself. So, uh, and a lot of people are, I actually thought that people were generally okay with it because dark mode got darker and people are typically okay with, uh, dark mode getting darker in a lot of cases, unlike this site right here. Um, but, uh, but change is bad. Change is bad. And I think it's, I think it makes, um, makes perfect sense that, uh, that we all get our, our, our Jimmy's rustled over it because change and change is bad. Uh, but Personally, I don't really feel like it's that, that big of a difference. It's a, little, it's a little bit too much contrast in some areas for me, but uh, for the most part, it looks fine. I did prefer the old one. I'm not going to lie. I did prefer the old one, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, F, F, uh, F, 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 on 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, is bad. Yes, that is true. Um, but... It just took a year to figure this out. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, colors don't bother me as much as the new font. Yeah, the new font is a is is a bit weird. As we talked about yesterday, there's certain parts of the there's certain uh, letters that actually touch, uh, which is a bit funky. Um, and actually, in some cases, letters actually overlap. Like a W will overlap on an H, right? Um, you you <laughs> you 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 block the whole the new font. Can you do that? Hold on a second. Can you actually do that? Oh my god. <laughs> Man, life keeps changing today. So many revelations. Jesus. Um, but yeah, so uh, you can filter it. Man, I'm gonna filter that motherfucking font. That's awesome. The kerning on the font is killing me. Yeah, it's a little tight. Uh, what, I, what I did notice, and it may not help, I'll, I'll, it may not help basically any of you guys, but uh, if you zoom in, if you zoom in to 125%, suddenly the font becomes a little bit more... Uh, 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 a little bit more easier on the eyes. Actually, and right now I'm looking at it right now on stream, which which is not gonna help you guys much uh, at all. But uh, but yeah, looking at it right now, 125 percent in the dashboard. Looking at chat, it actually does look it looks fine. But uh, at the size, at the by the the default size that they uh, uh, that you see when you go to Twitch.com, TV.tv is uh, is uh, yeah. You've been using Twitch at 125 for years. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing. It's like for me as well. Like uh, <laughs> kerning or crimming. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I I use it. Because of the high resolution screen, I always use 125%. Um, but if you're at 1080 or so, or lower, heaven forbid, it's probably completely unreadable. It's probably just a huge fucking mess. But, I, I mean, as as we learned today, uh, thank you, Zelda, we can uh, we can U-block the actual fonts and swap it out for something else. There's probably a number of, of uh, uh, what was that, what's that, uh, basically a number of scripts or things that you can do to, to, to do it. 480p, oh my god. Are you playing this shit on? Are, are you? Are, do you use your computer on a PS One screen or something? It's just whoop. There you go. Mm hmm. In other Twitch news, Twitch has been, uh, and this actually started happening uh, probably about about two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago now. Um, we went from a Twitch is not banning enough to Twitch just won't stop banning. And it was quite the shift 
that uh, it just felt like they were just banning everybody. It was just like left and right for mostly for uh, for like a, a, adult content. I won't uh, adult content's not really the word to use. But suggestive content is what I should say. Uh, but yeah, they were they were definitely dishing out a ton of bans um, to like various streamers. Some of you guys may remember there was this issue with uh, the Chun Li streamer uh, where she was wearing a Chun Li cosplay. Um, and you can actually see in the picture here that you know, as you would expect a Chun Li cosplay would do, it rides up pretty high, so her thighs are, are, are hanging out now. Um, uh, this is typical for a Chun Li um, costume, but I think what what really came into question in this case is that is the way that she was repositioning her camera so that you can see her, uh, uh, you could see her thighs and whatever. I mean, I'm just trying to see this from from their perspective of what they saw and the reason why they ended up banning her for for a limited time. It was only like, like three days or something like that. Uh, yeah, she kept adjusting, which it's like adjusting your camera a lot. Like, it's hard to get mad at people for wanting to adjust the camera, right? But again, I'm trying to see this from like through Twitch's eyes on like what what is it that they're that they're looking for? So this happened. She was she's been since uh, reinstated. There was another issue that happened with this young lady here. She um, and this was just stupid. So she wears uh, she wears workout clothes she, on her stream. If you look at her stream, she typically wears workout clothes. Uh, she also um, they don't have a picture of it here, unfortunately. But she also uh, only streams from like here up, basically. Like you can't see anything else. And she uh, she got a warning. I think she got a warning for like for suggestive clothing or something. And so it was just like weird that they're going out in there and they're. Uh, uh, jumping on on some of these streamers and really not necessarily it just feels like they're not really looking at the content right to really see is it suggestive right is it suggestive content does she have this have a habit of doing it uh, as will mentioned um the uh, previous streamer uh she was banned for uh suggestive attire before so this could have been like a repeat um still in, in the context of all the different bands that they were dishing out, it felt like, it, it, again, that's the point of this, is that it felt like they were really, really going ham on trying to basically uh, uh, take care of, of, of uh, streamers or remove streamers that were, um, that were streaming relatively suggestive and adult content. Shirts. Elsewhere on Twitch. So like an addition of more shirts. Maybe, uh, apparently everything here is fine. Eventually, I want to. <sighs> and then, and then, because I'm telling you, there's a lot. There was a lot. And then there was a. Uh, that's not the clip. <laughs> that's the clip we just showed. We don't want to show that one again. Uh, we got a clip from uh, a Sarai. I believe that's why I was pronounced. It's a French artist. Uh, she does. Uh, lewd like hentai but like with the, but like you know safer work i guess you could say most just lewd just lewd content lewd anime content uh and yeah like scorpio said yeah some artists and she's just, just one of them uh she got a she got a warning that her, her content was a little bit too suggestive and actually i'll let her go ahead and so yeah uh, recently i got a message from twitch for this drawing here and this drawing there and they said i should stop drawing loot stuff and maybe it's because we see like the camel toe on this drawing but that's why they wanted me since it's my first time you know getting a notification from them i hope it won't happen again because i asked them so what is the problem with this drawing is it the camel toe is it the pose what 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 is against twitch here as i need to know to not go against them and they still haven't answered me that's so i understand that she has she has a thick accent um, so what she's saying is, and also the music is quite loud, uh, she was warned for some content that, that she has here. The clip is still up, so I'm guessing that it's not necessarily something that you can't show on Twitch. You just can't draw it, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> she asked, she asked what was wrong with the content, and she did eventually get a response back, and it pretty much was just vague enough where it was just kind of like, well, you have to figure it out. You just have to figure it out. Um... And so she's really upset, obviously, because, and she even says in a clip that she's just fucking bullshit. So that's why I think that's really sad for the art session that we can't uh, be able to draw at least, you know, nude 
We, we should be able to draw nude, but you know, without the tits, asshole, and pussy, you know? Just, just like, like a Barbie doll, you know? We should be able to draw that on stream, because even so, if someone wants to learn, he needs to be able to draw the anatomy, you know? Yeah, so she's... <laughs> wow, look at that! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, I... Uh... This sounds so much better with the with her accent. It it is a really good accent, actually. Like, I I realize that if you're like in Quebec or something like that, you just hear this shit all the time. But for someone who never hears it, it's just kind of like, wow, this is pretty good. The show writes itself, dude. Yeah. So she got a warning that said that uh, she needs to ease up on some of the content that she's doing. Uh, but then it was pointed out. Here is Gears Art. He's a 2D illustrator for, for Twitch. Uh, he works for Twitch. Anyone know what canvas settings I should use? And he's discussing. Um, answer anything, your question in chat. That's. I guess it depends on the projects that you're working on. So. I love Gears. His art is amazing. I think that's great. I think that's great. That his art is awesome. But I do feel like there's a double standard here. I do feel like there's a double standard here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. This is a little suggestive. I'm actually worried about showing it <laughs> right here. Let's go to close it. Uh, I don't see any bias here. Yeah, it it yeah it, it definitely feels like a double standard. I'd feel like given the I mean given the the these two clips together, they're not like one is not like super old or anything. Uh, but still, it's not it's it just feels like if they're gonna take a stance against artists drawing lewd content, may, content maybe they should take a stance against people doing live performance art. Of lewd content that happens every fucking day on fucking Twitch. Like maybe, 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 maybe the real thing should be looked at first before the art the art gets attacked. The actual people with talents <laughs> are being attacked, <laughs> and not the fucking people that uh uh that uh, well, I don't want to say they don't have talent, but you know. Uh, so yeah, so Twitch has been been uh uh oh i forgot i left this open uh twitch has been just on a really interesting trend of just not really doing this <laughs> just not really actually following this um and making people feel like like maybe maybe they're just kind of making the ship as they go along i've said before that it feels like twitch doesn't have any oversight in the moderation community or the moderation team uh it feels like it's just a bunch of people who are who just handle each situation case by case without necessarily comparing notes and coming up with a standard that everybody should adhere to and so you're getting on one hand you're getting an artist who draws lewd conduct uh or, or the lewd um uh, anime or whatever uh and she's getting warned to not to don't draw stuff suggestive content and on the other, you have an employee who has somebody who's fucking naked, covered by, I don't know, was it a dragon or something like that? I didn't see it because the titties were so big. But, but still, it just feels like, it feels like there's a double standard. And I understand that's an employee. And, and on the other hand, we have somebody who's not an employee. So maybe, he, yeah, maybe there's a double standard for employees. Uh, but then you have people like, I mean, like that clip that we saw of, uh, was that Amaranth or Lenini? <laughs> was Amaranth. Uh, just basically sitting spread leg in some panties or something like that on a, on a bed. It just, it just feel, it just feels like maybe, 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 maybe there's a double standard here. Maybe. Rules for thee, not for me. That's what it fucking feels like. Uh, it's not a, it's not a minor issue. It's, it's an MO. It's, yeah, it's just, uh, did you hear the employees? Wait, did you hear what happened last night at the partner party? Uh, well, is it the, the drinks part? We just talked about that. Uh, I didn't hear anything else, though. Why? What'd you hear? We're about to wrap up the Twitch news stuff, so what'd you hear? Hmm? Go, 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 go. We're waiting on it. The news is going. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 Get to typing. Get to typing. Security kicked out. Relic like the clown who streams with his mask on and couldn't have it on the convention. Oh! Wait, wait. Did you just make that shit up? <laughs> is there a Relic the clown? Did they look this up? They wouldn't let him on with a mask. Well... I, 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 in some, I, I can understand if, if that's a real thing. Uh, I can understand given the current security climate in the U.S., why you wouldn't want somebody literally showing up with a mask on 
at a public event. Uh, it just doesn't really, or, or not, not public, but at, at, a, at a private gathering of a lot of influential people. But that's his character. Oh, I don't, I mean, I don't care if it's his character. Like, still, I mean, it, unfortunately, from a security perspective, that's what happens. Uh, the rig's part put the, and then them ignoring the fact that, that a more relaxed party atmosphere was wanted. Yes, yes, all right, so we did talk about that. And yeah, I totally agree. Uh, every year, I would like to see, and you know, one of the reasons why I didn't go this year was because it's like, there's nothing there for me. Like, the Twitch, the, the actual partner party was the only thing I really wanted to go to last year. And obviously hanging out with friends, right, which not too many actually go. Uh, but the party is always so fucking loud. You can't talk to anybody. So it's just kind of like, like two years ago, two or three years ago, Long Beach, uh, Long Beach, they had a, uh, it was super fucking loud inside, but they had a huge out outdoor area that was still pretty loud, but still you could at least go outside and talk and everything, but just stream your dad lounge. What the hell? All right. So, so yeah, TwitchCon is happening. I uh, will probably have more on TwitchCon next week for news, but for right now. We have to move on. Uh, it's not a full face covering, a bit different. Oh, who is it? Uh, oh, Dr. Disrespect. Oh, yeah, do yeah, Dr. Disrespect is okay because it's not, it's not a, uh, like, like what we said, it's not a full, uh, a full mask. Like, he's just wearing sunglasses and a wig, you know? So if you're wearing a full mask, that's definitely different. You're, you're, you're hiding every part of your face. Uh, the, the millennials they seem to try to carry to you with all the party stuff seems to not take into account that they can't afford to go to TwitchCon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean it's true <laughs> like it's like it's true i mean first off twitchcon is not really meant for uh uh it's not really meant uh, for 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 viewers i guess i mean viewers can show up but for the most part like the people that go are are actual streamers partner streamers affiliate streamers right so yeah but damn wow this is cutting deep cutting deep so uh moving on Moving on, uh, Borderlands 3 launched since the last news episode, and uh, overall, it's doing pretty good. Overall, it's breaking all kinds of numbers and shit, breaking all kinds of records, um, and for the most part, people are happy. Uh, there's not, this. There's, there's honestly, there's not a whole lot of n negative anything here, and what's up? What? Yes. Mango. Yes. And uh, 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 rainbow jelly. Wrist. <laughs> woo woo! Sorry guys, back to the news. Uh, so Borderlands 3 is the fastest selling game in 2K's history. That was really important, by the way. I have to have my, I have to have my boba tea. Alright? Yes, rainbow jelly. The fuck? Uh, so, uh, it is doing overall very well. It could have done better. It could have done better. As, as this person points out here, uh, Randy Pitcher says, fun fact, the, on PC, the data uh, is that the launch day peak concurrent players of Borderlands 3 is about twice as high as all-time concurrent players of Borderlands 2. Wow, you guys are great. Now, <clears throat> This is all, we don't actually have this, this data anywhere. This is just what Randy says. Okay, so we don't, you have to, it, you have to basically say, oh yeah, I trust Tim Sweeney and Randy to not lie to the public. And whatever your perspective is on that is how you take this news, right? So let's assume that he's not lying to the public. And this was the largest uh, concurrent players, uh, or peak concurrent player in Borderlands history. Um, well, Borderlands history is really just Borderlands 2. Uh, and it says right here, according to Steam charts, the peak concurrent user count of Borderlands 2 was 124. So twice as high for Borderlands 3 equals around 250k. If Borderlands 3 was a Steam release, that'd make it a top 10 game of all time. Of all time. Payday 2 had a similar peak. So it could have actually had, it could have broken into a top 10 of all time record if it had that 200 and, and keep in mind that's the 250k so egs numbers basically which we know it would have been more than that it would have been egs plus whatever's on steam which would have been more than 250k uh yeah steam could have been very well have been 200 well, about 400 000. like easily i i think easily 400 000, uh for sure um but 
but yeah, it, it's just what happens. It's just don't hate. I don't hate. I mean, maybe we'll have an opportunity to uh, to break a few more records when it releases for everybody else in what next year, right? Was it next January, March, something like that? Now, it did have issues at launch, right? I'm playing them down because most of the issues weren't that big of a deal. It was like little shit, little shit here and there, like a corrupted save, so you lose all your progress, like, uh, split-screen issues, and some other stuff, right? So nothing too crazy. Um, but what's funny is that people who are upset with Borderlands 3 were going to the Borderlands 2 Steam forums to bitch about it, because there's nowhere else they can go to bitch about Borderlands 3, or look, not say bitch, but looking for help. Right? So they ended up going to, uh, to the Steam forums, uh, Borderlands 2, in order, to, uh, in order to get some fucking help! They just wanted some help! And that's the only thing that... Because EGS doesn't have forums. And uh, as far as I know, I guess there's not... Is there an official Borderlands forum somewhere? <laughs> like, is there, is there... Like, can I go to 2kgames.com slash forums or something and actually see uh, some discussion there? I, I, Gearbox has forums. They have forums. Okay, so I, I guess there's that, uh, but yeah, there is, but it's dead. It's pretty dead. There you go. Uh, oh, there it is. Burbs ain't got it. Uh, let me see. Let me go and grab it here. I'm curious what the uh, what the traffic looks like here. How about hot fixes? Uh, oh, this is an interesting layout. Okay, so what is the general discussion? Ah, uh, here we go. And then views. Well, their top viewed thing is two has two thousand views, so it's not it's not a considering the size of the game, uh, in terms of popularity, that's not a very large number in terms of views. Um, I mean, their peak was two hundred fifty thousand viewers, and there's two point four thousand views on just the or, or players, and there's only two point four. That's a very small percentage of people that just looked at that. Uh, so it's relatively dead, but I had to uh, I had to Google to find it. Yeah, so. So, I just thought it was pretty amusing that, uh, because there's no forums in EGS, people took to Borderlands 2 forums. Uh, and other, uh, other issues that came up that were pretty hilarious, uh, was that somebody actually uninstalled and re refunded and uninstalled the game, and they were still able to, oh, okay, uh, they were still able to play the game. After it was refunded, which, by the way, I didn't realize that they had, uh, refunds that actually function, uh, and uninstalled. He was able to go into the direct directory, launch the executable, and still play the game. So, for those of you guys who are playing currently on EGS, and maybe you want to save a few bucks, just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, that's bad. <laughs> so, so yes, Borderlands 3 did launch. Uh, overall, people are pretty satisfied with it. Uh, everybody that I've talked to that's played it has really enjoyed it. Uh, they've done a good job with, uh, uh, I guess with the, I guess with just the gameplay and kind of polishing it up a little bit. It's, it's basically people are saying it's better than Borderlands 2 and people liked Borderlands 2. So that's gotta be a good thing. I'm not somebody who plays the Borderlands series. So I wouldn't know. Uh, but I will tell you that my, a friend of mine who him and I don't agree on any games. Uh, he was, he was telling me, he was basically just like rubbing it in my face. He was playing the game, even though he knows that I will not install the Epic game store launcher. Um, but some of the stuff he was sending me, I was like, damn, man, this is fucking cool. Like, con conceptually, yeah, it looks fucking cool. But I'm not going to install EGS for that shit. I will wait for it to come on a Steam and then go on sale. Uh, was it some sort of anti-piracy thing that caused a constant upload in the background? I don't know. That's a thing. A lot of the problems that happened didn't outweigh the good. Right? And I'm trying, again, I'm even though I like to like a poke fun at, at Randy and, and Borderlands and Gearbox, especially Gearbox, <laughs> and, 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 and Epic... Like, I still feel like it's, it, I feel like it's, it's, uh, it, it would be, um, I mean, it'd be, it'd be wrong of me to say, you know, the game sucks and everyone's really mad about it. No, I mean, overall people just like the game, like the good outweighs the bad. Uh, and that's what you want in a, in a triple A game. So, you know, Randy said something along the lines of, uh, how he wanted, how the internet doesn't care as long as my next game is good. And he got that. So it's, so it's. Every new, all the news we report from here on out on Randy might actually be met with a little bit of flack because his last game was good. Um, it was debunked to get never checked up on it. Yeah, yeah, so that's the other thing, too. Uh, I saw they had a Summit 1G grenade, which is pretty amusing. Oh, really? That's kind of cool. Like, with, a game, with a game with that much shit in it, right? With that many guns and that much like, shit to name, 
I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like like World of Warcraft, there are so many things you start to pull from the, uh, you start to actually pull from the community and grab names and whatnot. Uh, speaking of, <clears throat> speaking of uh, Epic Games Store, uh, we actually got a report that says uh, uh, Epic Games paid. Pardon me, I'm still congested. I'm just for the rest of my life. Man. Epic Games paid 9.49 million euros for control exclusivity, according to Digital Bros. Uh, previously, we didn't really know exactly how much money they gave to developers, and we know that it's going to be different for every dev, right? We know that every game is going to be... Uh, <laughs> fucking YouTube jokes. Uh, we know that every game is going to uh, uh, yield a different um, uh, price when it, when it comes to making a deal with EGS, uh, with Epic. Uh, but but at least we know like, this is this is a good number to look at and say okay, I understand why a developer would go to to Epic. I I get it. But the thing is, it doesn't matter because it's still not going to convince me to play the game and support Epic. It's still shitty. It's like I understand you're trying to pay the bills, but I'm still not going to buy the game. Good thing you already got the money, though. <laughs> like, it's, it's a good thing you got the money up front. Uh, but it's good to have a number, though. Is that $9.5 million worth making people hate you? Let me tell you. Yes. Le yes. Yes. Kimo, stop. Let me ask you, you the same question. Is $9.5 million worth making people hate you? Ye What's the answer? <laughs> the answer's probably going to be yes. I'll happily take $9.5 million. Euros, too. Not, not dollars. It's way more than, right? Isn't Euro, is, are Euro, wait, Euro is still good, right? Because, like, the U.S. money is, is garbage right now. So, yeah. Um, doesn't go far at a game studio. I, I don't, I'd imagine Control probably doesn't have a very large game studio, but you're right. Yes, it's definitely a 10.5 million U.S. dollars. See? Man, U.S. garbage. Um, no one likes me already anyway. So, what's the difference exactly? It's better than the Canadian money. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to have a number. It's really good to have a number because now, because... Previously, it was always speculation. It was like, what is, uh, you know, how much money are they getting? I, I actually thought it was somewhere in the, in the realm of like, you know, two to three million or something like that. Because they were talking about it was uh, like 100,000 copies or something like that. And so 100,000 copies for a $20 game. I mean, it's not, you know, $10 million. And so, uh, so yeah, now we at least have a number for, uh, for a game of, of that caliber. Uh, if you play Control, if you've seen Control... Uh, it's, um, you know, it's not, it's not a, uh, uh, an 8-bit, uh, procedurally generated platformer, super hard platformer. Like, it's, a, it's actual, like, there's a lot of artwork and everything that goes into it. Yeah, Gun says it's dope. A lot of people say it's really good, actually. Uh, like, it's, it's a really good game. So, good for them. Good for them for getting paid. You got control for free with a 2080, but it's a good game. Do you actually, wait, if you got it with your 2080, do you actually have to install the Epic Game Store to get it, or can you get it from somewhere else? Because, I'm guessing... I'm guessing it's exclusive, right? I'm guessing. Has to be. Uh, let's see. Uh, elsewhere. Yes, I'm a sucker for free games. That's fine. I'm not going to hate on anybody that installs Epic Game Store at all. It's on. It's all. It's all. It's your own decision. Speaking of companies that, that really would like that $10 million. Anthem will get seasonal updates rather than previously announced acts. And they said that they're doing it because they want to devote more time to uh, make a more thorough review and uh, change some of the workings of the game. Um, why I feel really bad for anybody that bought this game. Like, it just, and it's not, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Visually, it looked, it looked cool. It was like, oh, cool. It's like Destiny, but Bioware. It's got to have something in it, right? And... Yeah, like, well, yeah, really wanted to succeed, Absolutely. especially for Bioware. We really, I think everybody really wanted Bioware to make something that was going to stick. Uh, and we thought maybe this was the one. And boy, yeah, the, what, who said that? The slowest sinking ship. That's exactly what it is. It really is the slowest sinking ship. Uh, if uh, Dragon Age sinks, that is the end of Bioware. Yeah, if, if, if Dragon Age... Yeah, if, if Dragon Age fails, then, I mean, that's, that, yeah, I, I do believe that that's pretty much the end of, uh, of Bioware. Uh, they were betas, and the betas weren't that bad. 
Uh, when Dragon Age fails. Dang. Dang. Ooh. Sorry. Man. When Dragon Age fails. Man. Uh, give the shit the EA pulled the last Mass Effect and Anthem. Uh, Dragon Age doesn't stand a chance and is going to tank Bioware. That's, see, that's a, that's a problem, right? It's... <sighs> Bioware has had so many fuck-ups. They are seriously... This, the, this next Dragon Age has to be stellar. Has to be stellar. Because they have to dig themselves out of a hole. Right? They have to dig themselves out of a hole. So th they have to take all the shit that they've done in the past to make people, you know, low quality. I mean, the quality of the game. Like, look at Andromeda. When Andromeda came out with the fucking weird faces and everything, just doing all this crazy stuff. Like, like, how the fuck did that get anywhere? And so they, they've been slowly digging themselves deeper and deeper. And so now they need one game to save them. Like, I understand what people say they're already dead because they've dug themselves so deep with all the previous titles. It's fucking ridiculous. I can't wonder how many of these fuck ups is caused by pressure to release these games as soon as possible. Yeah. I wonder if I think the question is, what is it? What, what is the overarching thing that's, 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 that is ruining these games? They, somebody, it's gotta be a person that is just making the same wrong decision. Every fucking game, because they don't change. They do. They keep, Fucking up basically the same, not the same thing, but doing things. They, they move from one thing that people don't like to another thing that people don't like. And it's almost like they just have like a deck of cards and each one, like a tarot cards. Each one is like something that gamers don't like. Here's, you know, micro, paid away microtransactions. Here's a, a, a DLC, day one DLC, on disc DLC. Here's like... Here's all of this. Like, here's always online DRM. Uh, here's all like, you know what I'm saying? And they're just moving from one thing to another. Uh, and instead of it's instead of just saying, hey, maybe we should just like throw this whole deck away and actually, yeah, at junks, listen to what the consumers want. I mean, a lot of us are very passionate about Bioware because I, I think I think almost everybody here, maybe not everybody, but I think almost everybody here has at least played one Bioware game in the past that has left an impact. Right. For me, it's Mass Effect. Uh, for a lot of you guys, it might be KOTOR. It might be SOTOR, right? Like, it might be Dragon Age. Uh, there's there's a lot of folks who have played a game uh, from Bioware that's that was good. Dragon Age 2. Uh, Bioware lost a lot of that magic. It does. It feels like it feels like lost a lot of magic. I understand that some of you guys probably haven't, which is fine. If you want to raise your hands, be recognized for not ever playing a Bioware game, guess what? That makes you look silly. <laughs> that makes you look dumb. I can't really say that because, I mean, I play Mass Effect 3 to the end of three colors and shit like that, so maybe I'm the one that looks kind of stupid. But yeah, so uh, uh, so Anthem is not looking too hot right now. Do, do any of you guys actually play Anthem? Like, does anybody here actually play? Like, like you played in the past three days. Three days. So sometime during this week. Not the weekend. Sometime during the week. Played Anthem. Once. Anybody. <laughs> is anyone going to admit it? <laughs> Do you want to play Anthem? I know you don't. Play the beta and just knew it. Saw the clusterfuck coming and avoided buying it. Uh, I have 60 hours in, but it was about a month ago. Play back in March. Just waiting for the Destiny transfer to Steam. Yeah. Speaking of Anthem, Destiny. Uh, <laughs> Division 2 takes up the flawed looter shooter time. That's funny. <laughs> like, you have, a, you have a slot for that, right? <laughs> Listen, I only have room in my schedule for one flawed looter shooter. Uh, Anthem had early access yet? It's actually going to remain in it uh, indefinitely. I'd play Anthem if I get it for free in a humble bundle. Hell no. Okay, so basically, no one. Uh, I play one hour with the free Mother Origin and never got it back. Yeah, wow. Well, it's not necessarily the big, the largest sampling size, but I was curious if anybody did, because maybe somebody did, but nobody. <laughs> basically nobody. Uh... I should have lumped this in with the rest of Twitch news because this one was actually hilarious. A streamer, uh, I can't show this one. Uh, another streamer had their emote uh, not approved, I guess, or removed. And 
it was a I'll, sh I'll show you the one that has been approved okay all right yeah so this is approved the only difference i'm gonna show you guys because I, I can't show you guys the one that was removed because i feel like that would be because it was removed for a reason twitch doesn't want it on their on their site so i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm a drama, a drama, because this is a dramatization of what actually happened or what it actually looks like. There you go. That's the difference. That's, that's the difference between the one that was removed and the one that was approved. Better hide that before we get in trouble. I don't know why. I don't understand. The guy said he, I guess he didn't get it. He, he, what do you say? He says, uh, after trying to figure out what could possibly be sexual about it for 10 days, while begging for Twitch to give me answers. Shift rip has finally been verified after making the underwear transparent. The underwear was also white. Okay. I, I, I want to stress this, that it's not just, I mean, I should have used a black line, but it was because it was a black line, but there was, that was it. That was the only difference. Stop sexualizing SpongeBob SquarePants. Twitch moderation team. When I look at SpongeBob, I don't immediately go for the dick. Oh man. <sighs> Think of the children. Think of the children. How dare this uh, on, a, on a children's cartoon show? Boy, there's no way that would fly today. Ah, man. So, speaking of Twitch, do you guys watch TV? I think a lot of you guys might already know this, but this is kind of surprising to me, actually. So, there's a show called. The Mass Singer. Now let me explain. Before you guys jump on this shit, hold on a second. Just wait. So there's a show called The Mass Singer. And it is. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Uh the way it works is they have these celebrities that wear masks. They don't tell you who it is, and they're like these crazy, crazy masks and everything. Um, and they get up and they sing a song and then you have, uh, A-list celebrities such as, such as Jenny McCarthy, um, Ken Jeong, and like two other people that are judging and they're trying to guess who is underneath the mask. Now, last week, last week, or like the last season, uh, Jen and I, Jen and I actually tuned in, uh, like in the last few episodes. And it was pretty good. Like, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a guessing game. It's like, who? Ken Jong. Ken Jong. Ken Jong. Chung. Chung. Jung. God, I over. Ken. You guys, I did not say Kim Jong. Anyways, so, uh, it's actually pretty good. So last night, we're watching. And lo and behold, well, it's not on here, but I'm going to spoil it for you. Lo and behold, actually, it is on here. Fucking Ninja was on there. Now, you could go and you could, uh, you can YouTube his, uh, his performance. Maybe. I don't know if it's on there. Uh, I did not guess it right because I was spoiled going into it, of course. Because Slasher, the guy who ruins everything, tweeted it out, like, the second it went, the second it went live. Uh, so... He, uh, so Ninja was on there, he was doing a dance, and he sang Old Town Road, uh, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad, there are other, there are other, uh, singers on there who were much better, some were worse, uh, he wasn't the worst one up there, he, but he did get up there, and he put on a show, and people liked it, and what's funny is, nobody knew who he was. Nobody on the, on the, on the panel knew, they were guessing PewDiePie. They guessed PewDiePie, because they give you clues. They guessed PewDiePie. And what's funny is, even, even Jen, even Jen was like, 
oh, it wouldn't be PewDiePie. He's too controversial. <laughs> like, it, it wouldn't be. And, but when they do the guesses before they do the unveil, like, they show the face. So they're like, all right, so so-and-so guess PewDiePie. And so-and-so guess who? And then he takes off the mask. It's like, oh. And I was like, oh, it's Ninja. Oh, yeah. My son loves you. My son's going to be so excited. Like, that's what Jenny McCarthy said, right? Uh, and what's even fucking better, even better, is... I think uh, Nick Cannon, the host, he was like, he, what did he say? He, he said, he said, oh, it's Twitch Superstar Ninja. I was just like, damn, Microsoft's got to be feeling that. Ooh, sorry. He's like, oh, man, Twitch Superstar. Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. That's not what I ordered, but it's still pretty good. Damn. Uh, so, did Ninja correct them? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was, uh, so the way they do it is they edit, they edit everything. They shoot everything, uh, like, uh, uh, like, probably within, like, a week's time or something. Uh, and then they edit everything together, so that way, uh, less of an opportunity for people to, uh, figure out who the singer is and everything. But so, yeah, pretty much a lot of this stuff is, uh, is pre-recorded. Uh, and you can even tell by the editing that it's not really done live. There's a lot of edits and everything. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was hilarious. It's like, so first off, you know, it is really weird having a, uh, somebody who represents the gaming community on a show like The Masked Singer. Uh, it makes me wonder if next season on Dancing with the Stars, if Dr. Disrespect will be on that. <laughs> like, it's, it really makes me feel like people are trying to, uh, uh, or that, they recognize, and you know, it's funny, if you watch that, I mean, please go and watch the clip, because it is surreal to see, you know, the, here are these celebrities, and, like, I would consider Jenny McCarthy a celebrity, absolutely, for, I mean, outside of all the dumb shit that she's done, okay? But in terms of, like, pure, is she known? Yes. Uh, and Ken, uh, Ken Jong, same thing. And the other guy who made that one song, same thing. And Nicole Scherzinger, that's, the, that's her name, that's her name. Um, I don't know what she's done. She sings, <laughs> but these are people that have a following on, uh, on social media and they were like kissing his ass. It's like, Oh, and it's 41 million followers. You want to go ahead and follow me and every, all that stuff. It's just, it's Ninja was probably, probably more popular than, uh, if you take social media, social media numbers into account, more popular than everybody on that show combined. Pussycat dolls. Oh, is that one? Sorry. Thank, thank you, Craftens. Thank you. Um, oh, you guys. Oh, you guys are all over that shit. Sorry. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So he he was he, he's probably more popular popular social media numbers wise than everybody on that show combined, which is just crazy, just fucking crazy. Um, I actually kind of want to go and see. I want to go and do the math on that because <laughs> they were kissing his ass big time. They were just like, oh, maybe you can follow me on uh, on Instagram. They were joking, of course, but still. Um, uh, you didn't know who she was? It just seems like uh, he would pimp himself out to basically anything for money. I mean, like anything. Maxi pads, Viagra, whatever. Wouldn't you? I cannot, I cannot hate on the man for doing everything he can to make a buck on his brand before it's, before it's worthless. Uh, I know he could protect his brand for as much as he can, much as he, for as long as he can, if he wants to protect it and all that. Like, especially with the twitch.tv slash ninja a porn fiasco that we we dealt with about a month and a half ago. Uh, but yes, cash in while you can. If you have an opportunity to sell out, listen, guys, if you have an opportunity to sell out, do it. Do it. If you built a brand and you can make a shitload of money and you're fairly certain that your brand is probably not going to be around in about 10 years, do it. Yeah, yes. Retirement ain't cheap. Fucking do it. Get paid, please. Do it for all of us. Okay? Honestly, at this point, uh, I wouldn't. He's worth like a metric fuck ton. If it were me, I would only be doing stuff I gave a shit about at that point. Well, we don't really know what his financial status is. Uh, I, I, I'd imagine that given his clout with a certain age group, they wanted him for that reason. Uh, they wanted to get him on the show and, um, and try to tap into some of that younger demographic and, uh, uh, and, you know, get them to watch, watch the show. Maybe one of the other, maybe Dr. Disrespect is up there somewhere underneath one of those masks singing, which could totally be. 
It doesn't have to stop at Ninja. We can have other folks up there. Shit, remember when Dr. Disrespect was sitting sideline at the fucking, uh, uh, the NBA Finals? Everybody was talking about it. Please. <laughs> uh, sell out and support. Yeah, there you go. Yes, where are you going to go? Hmm. That was the best. Absolutely. That was, that was, that was the best. The photo of him sitting on the side. What was it? Custom R slash custom player cutscene. All right. R slash custom player cutscene. You have to go to that subreddit. It's just the fucking best. Um, so moving on to, oh, you got it right here. Actually. Yes. Thank you. Guns. <laughs> it's so good. Look at him. He got the fucking headphones on. Okay. He has the fucking headphones on. Oh, I, I, I love him for doing this. I love him for doing this. All right. So next up, some of you guys may have uh, um, noticed that some of your favorite YouTubers were missing. You're missing a blue check. Uh, that blue check is supposed to represent the fact that you're verified and that you are the person who is being represented on the actual account. So, for example... If I am, a.k.a. Mike B, which I am, and I submitted for a verification checkmark, I should technically be able to get it. But that's not the way it works. <laughs> the way it works now is if your name is Will Smith, you get a checkmark. If your name is, uh, is Jimmy Fallon, you get a checkmark. But if your name is... Well, this is Cavos. I'm not sure who this is. But I'm sure most all of us know who Toby Turner is. And Toby Turner, Tobuscus, uh, is getting his channel removed, his uh, check mark removed. Now, this means n nothing. They went back on this? Did they go back on this? Has this been updated? Because this is, this is about eight days old. They reverted all this? Oh, my God. I didn't see anybody say they got their check mark back. The CEO tweeted, they're sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, good. Because I wanted to point out that it doesn't have any impact on anything. It was just like demoralizing. Uh, they are going to. Uh, just come, somebody drop me a link to that real quick. Oh, actually, I'll pull it up real quick. Let me see. Uh, YouTube verified. So this is why I have a co host. Let me see. Uh, verified. YouTube verified. Verify your account, YouTube verify. Let me see, news. How long YouTube channel, YouTube reverses decision, decides top creators can't. Okay, this is, uh, uh, let's see. So it says, YouTube reverses position, decides top creators can remain verified. Let me find the actual tweet. Here's, here's Susan here. All right, so she says, update one. We heard loud and clear how much the bad me badge means to you. Channels that currently have verification will now keep it without appeal. Uh, we'll continue reviews, reviewing these channels to ensure we're protecting creators from impersonation. More on our changes. So, so, Susan <laughs> Wiki Wiki. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Wow, is that how it's pronounced? <laughs> Close to that, right? Uh, so yeah, so they are gonna reverse it. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I didn't, I didn't double check on this story and I really should have. I apologize for that. But that's why I have a co-host. So I can blame you guys for when I fuck up. Thank you so much. Uh, so good. The check bar is coming back for some folks. I do want to actually go and check uh, the only person I really care about on this list. There's actually two people, Jenna Bain, and the other one would be uh, um, Prendor. Because these are people that, like, you know, they've been around forever. If they have a check mark, just leave it with them. I'm going to go check Prendor real quick and see. Prendor does indeed Hello, have. Everybody, oh, everybody, how's it going? It's me, Prendor. God, what a voice. Prendor does indeed have a check. It's not blue, though. I can't remember if it's always been that way. Hmm. All right. Well, good. We can just move right on, huh? Fucking Tobuscus has been on YouTube for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when I saw that Toby Turner was uh, Tobuscus was was uh, uh, was removed from this this system, like it that was weird. That was weird because he he is a he is an OG uh, YouTuber, one of the originals, and has a massive following still. Like, he doesn't post, but like once every six months, but still. It'd be weird to just remove it. It's like, oh, hey, well, thanks for help, help, helping us grow the platform. We're going to go ahead and remove this status that we gave you to help, help set you apart from just any random person who 
who manages to make an account. Um, Tobias is a name I haven't heard from. Him. Yeah, I know, I know. Me too, actually. This is the first I was like, oh shit, he's still around. I went and looked. He's like, nah, not really, not really. Uh, I see some final updates here. These are like small things. Remember, there was that DDoS that happened on September seventh for World of Warcraft. A bunch of servers went down. Remember, and everybody was trying to find out who it was. Internet detectives went to work. Well, Blizzard has responded. It responded that they got him. You remember? You remember? You remember? So it says, uh, it is our understanding that within a few days, authorities were able to successfully identify and arrest the suspects. We got him. We got him. And really, that's it. Really, that's it for news. I mean, there is, there is this thing which is somehow the most popular. Let me go do this, actually. Uh, this is probably the, the most popular story this week. Where everybody is, this is such a fucking crazy story. Okay, so I have been linked to this like a hundred times. Okay, which is fine. I'll give you guys shit when I get a lot of replies for a certain story. I'll give you guys shit. It's like, man, I've only heard this like a hundred times. Uh, but I do appreciate it. But this was like 300 times. Okay. First, it made a lot of headlines because everyone would thought it was just another Bethesda fuck up. It's a third party that made this, okay? It's not, it's not Bethesda making these things. They made 20,000 of them. Uh, and they sold 36. I thought the 36 thing when I read about that was a joke. Because I, I just thought... If you make 20,000 of something and you put it in GameStop stores across the country, surely you'll sell more than 36. You'll, you'll just accidentally sell more than 36 <clears throat> or 32 hey, I think it was 32 it's 32 or 36 it doesn't matter I feel like you could just accidentally sell that much by like I don't know register error you scan the wrong code or something and you you put the code in for this I feel like that happens 36 times you mean like 3600 no uh, no uh, 30 36 36 32 they don't they actually didn't update this story but um I think it was 32. But the story was that they're being recalled because of uh, mold risk. That was the actual story. And they did say in another article, not this one, they did say that they reached out to the 30 something people that, that bought it. And I thought that was hilarious. Not just the number, but that you sold so few that you were actually able to reach out to every single one individually. And... <sighs> And tell them, hey, hey, so listen, we're calling everyone that bought these things, all 30 something of you, uh, and letting you know that uh, you might want to bring it in. Just don't wear it or something. I don't know. Um, what about those that are on clearance? What is this? Hold on. What is this thing here? Ah, there it is. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, this is actually what I saw earlier. I think you guys uh, I had uh, someone linked it in Discord. Uh, after our article was published, a representative from Chronicle Coll Collectibles reached out to let us know that of the 20,000 Nuka-Cola themed helmets that were manufactured, only 32 were sold. It says that all of those customers were directly notified about the recall. Uh, you're pretty sure Josh is a legit one. Uh, what about Mario Kart phone game as locked high-speed race behind a paywall? Oh, man. What? I mean, we talked about the Joy-Con thing like a long time ago. Um, we knew they wouldn't fix it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about the Mario Kart game. I didn't realize anyone was playing that. Uh, they'll be demolded and shoved into Think Geek stores at a steep discount. That's right. Boy, those rainbow jellies are really hard to just, like, swallow. <clears throat> so anyways. <clears throat> Cube World launched. I don't have any articles or anything on this. I'm working on a video for it. Trying to get uh, uh, my shit to record audio, which I fixed it last night, so it should work fine. Uh, overall, people seem indifferent about it. There are some folks who, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, who do not like some of the features that uh, have been changed and removed. And there are some folks who are okay with it. Uh, I do plan on playing as much as I can to get as much information as I can to be able to lay everything out for those of you guys who are not playing. Um, and try to get that video guys out to you guys next week. I will tell you though that even though there is a very uh, a very short game loop where you're pretty much repeating the same thing over and over again until you get unless you get lucky 
and you start getting some loot to help make the transition to different regions a little bit easier, um, that's going to be a big turnoff for a lot of folks. So, so yeah. I'll let you guys know in my video that I'm going to put together. Next week, uh, let's see. Uh, what do you expect when you take six years to change a game and that's all we get? Well, that's what some people are saying. Other people are saying, well, it's two people and, you know, they work on a part-time, so I don't really know. Because uh, <clears throat> uh, it's just a bunch of old games. Oh, okay, it's games also. So that's it, guys. The Twitch opening ceremony starts in an hour. So we, uh, I mean, depending on what happens this weekend at TwitchCon, we should have a news, uh, regular news schedule next week. Uh, what is this? What is a broomstick league? Uh, is that a Harry Potter thing? Uh, and the new Switch has drift issues. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so here's the thing with this. Okay, so Jesus, I'm so sorry, guys. So here's the thing with the with the uh, TwitchCon drift issues. Um, apparently, it happens to all of them, but neither myself or two friends who also have Switches have experienced it. Um, I know that the new Switch Lite apparently has the same issues. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, I, I feel like this is not as big of an issue as it seems like, but I still feel like Nintendo needs to correct it. Because even if there is a chance for 0.1% of your, of your Joy-Cons to start to drift, uh, that's something that, I mean, think about, look at a recall for a vehicle. If 0.1% of your vehicles have an issue that, that changes the way you operate the, the vehicle, it's probably going to be recalled, right? That's the way it works. And so the same standards should, should apply, uh, to, you know, to hardware from, uh, from Nintendo. So I ain't going to run over some of it. That's why I didn't, that's why, that's why I didn't, <laughs> I didn't specify that it was a, operating the vehicle thing it'd be like something like uh if you uh your radio dial would not work if you uh if you use it too many times which would you know or use it just a handful of times your radio dial just suddenly doesn't work stuff like that uh that's some that's some shit that you would you would get fixed it may be a small percentage but still uh yes the nintendo does do free repairs it, it does take some time but like i said you know i have i have I, I i now have two switches uh but my my current switch gets used every single day. Declan uses my Switch every single day and I don't have any drift issues. So maybe I'm lucky, maybe my time will come, but I do know that they do offer um, free repairs. The problem is that you're gonna be without whatever piece of hardware that is. And if, if it's a Switch Lite, then you're gonna be out of a Switch Lite for, you know, for probably a month or so. So yeah. Uh, I didn't talk about it because we already talked about the Joy-Con a couple months ago because I didn't really feel like covering it again. Uh, and at the same time, I don't really feel like it's that prevalent, but they should still address it. Nintendo should still address it. Yeah, yeah, it might happen to me. Yeah, you're right, Guns. It totally might happen to me. Like, next week, I might be like, well, shit, here we go. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just telling you that, like, nobody I know has had it happen to them. And I feel like, you know, Reddit, which is probably where you guys first heard this, um, or at least where your, your writers of your favorite <laughs> news uh, sites heard this story. Uh, I feel like Reddit is a place that will amplify even the smallest of issues. And so, um, so yes, Nintendo, please fix it. But at the same time, uh, I don't feel like, uh, I don't, I don't feel like people need to necessarily worry about buying a, a switch specifically for this problem. So, yep. I do wonder how much other users, uh, the other users use the joy cons or how hard they press on the joysticks. Yeah, that's that's a tough one, right? Because we don't really know what's triggering it or something, you know. I've been playing Wild Classic. I'm not gonna play Classic, but that's it, guys. We gotta wrap up the show. <laughs> Call of Duty has one of its mods exclusive. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that because nobody should be playing on a PS4 or anything. <laughs> it's also Call of Duty, uh, but no, no, I totally forgot about that. Yes, that's a problem. Uh, but we're out of show time, so that's it. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. My name is Mike B. You can find me AK Mike B on all the things. Thank you so much for watching. Chat, thank you so much for helping out. I'll work on that time travel thing. And there you go.
Mm-hmm. Oh, that was changed. Not exclusive anymore. Well, look at that. It's not an issue. Okay. Well, blah. As far as moderation goes, and this is capitalized, am it? <laughs> who is in charge of channel moderation on Twitch? Is it a team of people? If so, who has the last say? Twitch has a strict TOS, but it would seem the punishment for the same act differs from one channel to another. Why is this? Ooh, the cheers! Oh, see, it's not just us. It's not it's just us. Uh, good question. Uh, it's a hard question, but I think it's one that like needs to get asked. So, uh, first of all, who's in charge of channel moderation, uh, stream moderation is what we'd call it, uh, is this global uh, trust and safety operations team I discussed earlier. That they just uh, hired somebody to lead. Most of the time, the decision gets made. Remember, we get, we get quite a few uh, of these reports. So, most of the time, the decision gets made by one of our trained, trusted, uh, full-time trust and safety. See, I fucking uh, said it earlier. I members. said it's case by case um, per person. Uh, See, they make the call based on the community guidelines. And there's no. Uh, and their their whole job is doing that well. Mm-hmm. Um, now there are things that are that are new. We've never seen this before. Where uh, there there's this sort of an ambiguity. It's like the guidelines don't quite cover the situation right. Like right, what, yeah. Uh, what's going on here? And in those cases, it winds up getting escalated up, uh, and you know, senior members of the team uh, talk about it. Uh, the team will get together and discuss it. Um, I mean, in, in the extreme, I, I am the CEO. Like at the end of the day, uh, everything winds up rolling up to me. Right. Like I don't actually have visibility or know about most moderation decisions because there's so many of them. Uh, if I did that, I would literally not be able to do anything else. And even then, I don't think I'd even be able to keep up with the volume. Right. But uh, but it really is the safety ops team that's job is making sure this, uh, this happens, and usually they have the last say. Um, and you, know, you try not to override the people, members of those teams because that's their job. They're living this day after day and looking at thousands of examples, and so they know what they've done the last 20 times. Um, and coming in as an outsider, it's actually kind of hard to know about that. Um, now, I think the other half of this question is about uh, why does punishment vary from uh, one act to another? Like, does that happen? And I think there's, you have to sort of split this into two parts. So, uh, of course, we make mistakes sometimes. Sure. Uh, any, any team making thousands of decisions a day will make mistakes. But if you leave mistakes out, when we make mistakes, we want to correct them, and we, we have an appeals process to do that. Uh, if you leave mistakes out of it, uh, you will sometimes wind up with a similarly, on the surface, superficially the same act, uh, getting a different punishment different enforcement action. There's two ways that happens. The first one is uh, different person. context. So when we're applying the community guidelines, we very specifically take context and intent into account. Mm-hmm. So if someone walks up to you on the street and shoves you, that's one thing. If someone walks on down the street and they trip and they push you, it might look, if just an outsider looking at the, uh, a video of that action, like it looks the same. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same. Your intent matters. Uh, and we are going to stand by that. Um, I think that's critical. Like knowing, and, and intent's always a matter of judgment. You can't tell what's in their head. Right, right. Like yeah. You don't really know someone's intent. So you have to guess. You have to guess at, well, based on the circumstance, based on the context, what is a reasonable, what a reasonable person think this person's intent was. Right. Um, but of course, that's how every criminal justice system works. That's how you treat your friends, right? Uh, your friend, uh, you know, does something uh, mean to you. you what are you talking about? The cat jumped. And that's, there's just... <laughs> There's the just cat no other way to jumped. do it that's fair. Otherwise, you're, you're in there a was, you There was no eating and, to be uh, found. And falling the same. Right. And I think that's obviously unjust. Right. Uh, so uh, that's one way. So we look at the context, and then we choose based on that whether you violated the guidelines at all. Mm-hmm. Because the guidelines, you don't, if you didn't intend it, in our opinion, you haven't violated the guidelines. Okay. And then uh, once you've determined you've violated the guidelines, it's just on rails. It's just if we've determined you violated the guidelines, there's a set set of punishments uh, that are escalating. Uh, but they do take into account whether or not you're a repeat offender. So you might have two people who violated the exact same thing, who did the exact same thing wrong, and one of them gets uh, you know, a week-long ban, and one of them gets a 24-hour ban. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's because the one with the week-long ban has a history of violations. The one with the Fucking day-long ban does cameraman. Doesn't. And so uh, that can also vary. And you, you may not know about all the violations everyone's ever had and their, their enforcement history. Um, and so I just ask, you know, as you're looking at these things, even if it superficially looks... Uh, like unfair or different, you know, to consider all that context. Um, and that said, uh, we sometimes will still make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we do, that's why we have an appeals process. Um, and that's why we're going, you know, to avoid that, to make sure that when... They need to uh, avoid making those mistakes possible, to begin with, because some of them... I talked about 
and some that's of them why uh, just, just, we're revising the community guidelines to make them more clear and easier to enforce because there are places where it's unclear what's going on uh, and where there's, there's edge cases that we didn't consider when we were making this version of the community guidelines. Mm -hmm. And so uh, clarifying them will help everyone understand the basis under which we're making decisions. That was, I mean, that's a good answer, man. I, I'm glad you went into detail on it. It's something that is, has been, has been a, a sticking point for a lot of, a lot of streamers and viewers. They want to know how the We need to train why. people so they don't make these, some of these mistakes to begin with. We can't just say it's okay to make a certain number of mistakes because we do X number of cases every single day. We have to say we're going to look at those mistakes and make sure that we train our folks to not make those same mistakes again.